Photoshop your logos or designs onto the surface of an image is something that you will always do. Today, I am going to show you three basic methods so that you can Photoshop your logo onto any surface like this, 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 and these. In most cases, you want your design to be placed somewhere close to a flat surface. Like this building, all the glass windows are flat, but this picture is not completely front viewed. If you want a very long design placed on that, it should be around this area. First, you should create a new layer and select the text layer in the Layers panel. Control-A or Command-A to select everything, and Control-C or Command-C to copy. Then go back to the newly created layer. Go to the top menu, find Filter and Vanishing Point. In this filter, you will be able to create a plate to match the perspective of your image like this. Then use Control-V or Command-V to paste the design you just copied. Drag it into this area, this vanishing point filter will change the perspective according to your plate. The only thing you will have to do is use Control T or Command T to activate the free transform tool to adjust the size a little bit. Photoshop will do the rest for you. And if you want to go a little bit complex, like put your logo in this area, vanishing point filter will also do the job. First, create a new layer and don't forget to copy the logo. This time, you can create a new plate on the front side of the building first. After you finish one side, put your mouse on the edge of the plate and hold Control or Command and drag. You should be able to create a second plate of perspective. Simply adjust it and paste the logo again. This time, when you drag the logo into this area, the vanishing point filter will not only put your logo on the front surface of the building, but also around that corner of that building to the second surface. Simply adjust the size a little bit. This should look realistic enough. Sometimes the surface you want to work with is a little bit curved, like this cylinder. In this situation, you can try Control T or Command E to activate the free transform tool, right click and find warp. Then go to the option bar to change the warp shape to a cylinder. Then you just have to drag around the anchor points that warp tool created for you to match the image. Every situation here will be different, so it's okay to spend a little more time on fine-tuning. Using the same method, you can also try the inflate for the warp shape to get your design on a sphere. It shouldn't be a problem. There are two small tips for you. One, before you start anything, always, always convert your design to a smart object. This way, after you finish putting your logo on somewhere, you will be able to double-click this smart object layer to change the design. You won't need to match all the perspectives again. Two, in most cases, your design will only take a small part of the surface like this. It will be a little difficult to use the free transform tool in this situation. My tip is to draw a border with similar size and proportions first, then select both the layers. This time when you transform, you only need to align the anchor points around four corners. Now that you have roughly put your design to somewhere, you will want to perfect the details a little bit more. Again, with this example, your designs are in the right position with the right size. But now it's just pure white. You can go to the Layers panel and lower the opacity. And try a different blend mode, like the overlay for this image. This way your design will match the windows of the building much better. The blend mode works totally differently, you should definitely try different blend modes in different situations. There is another method that can help you a lot in many situations. Like if I want something that looks like painted on this grass, all the blend modes won't work. You will have to use blend if to get there. You can double click the layer in the layers panel and the very first option is blending options. Go to the very bottom of that panel, try to drag around the underlying layers slider in the blend if function. It can help you get an effect that looks like your design is painted on the grass. This method also works when your surface is a very rough one, like this brick wall. Just play around with the sliders in the blend of function. You will be able to make your design look like real paint on that wall with all the damage and aging. Of course, there is one more method to change you from a beginner to a master. If you look close to this grass example, you can see that the edge of the design is perfectly smooth. 
Also, this brick wall example. This should not happen in real life. All the edges and colors should be damaged or aged similarly. To get that rough edge, you should first hide the designs layer and save as the file and rename it. Then go back to the layers panel and convert the layer to a smart object. Now Photoshop will cancel the blend if effect you just build early, but it's okay, we will work on that again later. Then go to the top menu, find filter, distort and displace. Try 10 for the horizontal scale and vertical scale and hit OK. Then locate the PSD file you just created. This way, Photoshop will create a rough edge for your design according to the background texture. Finally, you can double click the smart object layer to recreate the blend if effect. Now both the edge and color of your design looks like been painted on the grass. You can have a try on the brick wall example with the same method. The final result should be much, much more detailed and realistic. And I find this method very interesting when you try it on a wavy water image. With switch the blend mode to color dodge and a little bit of opacity. It looks like your design is under that water surface. And here is something you should remember. All the distort filter is based on your position. If you move your design, the distortion will not match the background. With the layer converted to a smart object early, you can use Ctrl T or Command T to activate the free transform tool first. Then move the layer again. This way, Photoshop will automatically recreate the distortion for you every time. This method also works perfectly on t-shirt mock-up. You should definitely have a try. With these three methods, you should be able to get over 90% of the situations when you need to put your logos or designs on somewheres. That's for today's videos. If you need the details of how to use some of the features of Photoshop in this video, I put the links in the description. Stay turned, I'll keep creating.